All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Main the Outspoken. Hope you're all doing well out there. We're going to try out the front once again. This is a new survival game, base building game that came out, uh, I believe, about a couple of months ago now. It's been out for a little while. And, you know, the first season or so of the servers has run its course. Um, most of these servers have a 45-day wipe window. Um, they have added some servers that don't wipe at all, um, but most of them are 45-day server wipes. Um, so a lot of the initial 45-day servers are about to complete, and they've opened up some new ones. So I'm going to try out a server that looks like it just opened yesterday, so it's still got 44 days left. And we're going to try this out and make a new character. They have made some changes to the game since it was released. So hopefully it's improvements, obviously. So yeah, we're going to try this out and see how it's looking and playing so far. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I do hope you'll leave a comment on the video today and follow the channel before you leave today. Alright, so I'm loading in... With a brand new character. And this is The Front, is the name of this game. So when you load in, it allows you to choose a few different spawn points across the map. Um, from what I remember playing last time, this area here, this kind of this desert, is kind of like the... The hardcore zone. <laughs> it's where the, uh, a lot of the really diehard PvP players and the, the higher tier loot and all that kind of stuff is all kind of down here. Um, so I think I'm going to kind of start uh, up here for now and maybe work my way down there eventually. But since I'm brand new, I just want to kind of start out here and hopefully not get harassed too bad by the PvP players yet. <laughs> we'll see. All right. We are officially in the game. Got to remember how to play. Gather resources, get myself like some tools and stuff. I can just pick up sticks and stuff off the ground too. The little house, there's probably bad guys there. Sticks on the ground that I can pick up. Kind of dark right now, so I can't really see that well. Somebody's sleeping bag. Here's a stick. A branch, I should say. So as you can see in the top right, uh, the game kind of gives you initial you know, little quests to do um, that help you unlock XP. So it wants me to craft a stone pickaxe and a stone axe. Does look like I can do that. Make the stone axe and the stone pickaxe. Alright, so now I have some basic tools. Definitely help with the resource gathering. There's a bad guy over there. That house. To learn how to make a... Kind of a spear or something. Alright, uh, so let's just do these quests real quick so I can get some XP. Let me gather some stone. Level 
Level two already. All right, now it wants me to craft a sleeping bag. So that. Takes wood and fiber, it looks like. All right. Have a sleeping bag. Put that down. All right, so now it wants me to unlock the wood foundation recipe. go and I have to be level three to make a spear it looks like gather some more resources I believe it's gonna make me craft like a little basic wood structure right I forgot so used to playing other survival games where you need to use, like, your pickaxe to get thatch or things like that. But in this game, it's just wood. Wood, fiber, stone, metal. Kind of the basic resources. So these kind of reddish colored rocks, I believe, have iron in them. Yep, iron ore. Alright, so now it wants me to build wood foundations. So, that. I believe I can also make a spear now, so let me unlock that. Yep, wood spear. Definitely need one of those. Make a couple just in case. Alright, so I made a wood foundation. There, we placed that. Now make three more basically you have to craft a you know a little primitive wood house basically to kind of keep an eye out too because this is one of the starting areas so there could be other players all right so now it wants me to make a territory flag or fiber for that all right so a territory flag. Assuming I'm going to need more wood to make walls and doors soon, so. Alright, so here's my territory flag. There we go. My territory. Alright, now it wants me to make a bonfire. Then I have to cook some meat, but I don't have any meat yet. A little bonfire inside my house. I guess I'll put it outside. So it wants me to light the bonfire now. There we go. There's some more resources. It wants me to build up my wood house here, so... Alright, so I have to unlock... Wood walls, wood doors, wood floors... Alright, so... So we need to make four wood walls. Yep, 
Then it wants me to make a window and a door. Door. Window. All right, so we're just waiting for those to craft. Let's see. Okay, so this is how you do the different. So you hold down your right uh, button on your mouse when you're going to place something, and then it gives you the option to place the different types of structures. So we're going to do a window frame. That. And we'll do the door frame here. Go. Door made. We have a window made. There we go. And we'll just go ahead and finish the rest of the building here. Do I need four walls, it looks like? Some more wood. And this does not belong to me. We get rid of this. And I have to repair my hatchet soon. Another sleeping bag and put that inside of my base. I was one wall short. Alright, so next it wants me to unlock the crafting bench. Where's that? Basic. Okay, crafting table. Does look like I have enough to make that. That. And then we will have to make some tape, it says. Alright, so we have the crafting bench. That right here by the door. And it also wants me to make a wood box. I need some rope to make that. Definitely need more wood. One thing in the early game, you never can get enough wood, it seems like. <laughs> And that plant mucus is kind of hard to get in the early game, too, depending on which part of the map you're on. If you're down in the desert, you can find it in the cactus plants. But when you're just hand harvesting these uh, bushes, you only kind of seem to get it maybe a little bit every, I don't know, five to ten plants that you gather. All right, I need to make stairs. Get into my base. And we can make that wood box that it wants us to make. So every time you complete one of these tasks, you earn XP, which is... Say hello in the chat. So hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well out there. Appreciate you tuning in. All right, so... 
place these stairs. There we go. We walk up into my base. And we have a wood box now. That. Storage box. And we'll place that extra sleeping bag in here. Or we go. So for some reason I get killed, I can respawn now. Alright, let's see what's next. So it wants us to make tape. And to make tape, we need plant mucus and fiber. Tape. There go. Completed that. Alright, so now it wants us to make a stone knife and to collect animal hide. And that will also get us the meat that we need to cook the meat. So, let's see. What do I need? Probably need to unlock something to make the knife. Here we go. Stone knife. Can unlock the bow too, but we don't use that too much. Alright, so what do we need to make a knife? We just need some fiber, which I had in here. That back. Alright, so we're making the knife. If I make some rope, I can make a shovel as well. Alright, so we have the knife now, um, and it wants us to make wood armor. Probably under gear, yep. Alright, so we have wood clothing. I think we make that in this crafting bench, maybe? Or do we just make it in our inventory? Oh, we just make it in our own inventory. Alright, so I'm going to need a bunch more wood and fiber. I'm going to go over here and see if we can't get into a little bit of an altercation with a bad guy. <laughs> I saw one out over here. Now, all over the map, you'll find these little buildings like this. Sometimes they're bigger. Um, sometimes it'll be like a whole like farm with barns and whatnot. Uh, but there's usually these NPC characters lurking about. So see, this is an Axe Bandit. Level 18. This may not go so well here, I don't know. Oof, yeah, he messed me up, but I survived. And we can search, and he gives us Ether Shards, Talent Books, some Bananas, and a Blueprint for Stone Foundations. So the ether shards you use to unlock your different tech skills. So these skills are, are also known as tech. And the higher level skills you have to have the ether shards in order to unlock them. And then these talent books you use to unlock talents. Those are under a separate tab in your inventory. And those basically enhance your character. So, like, this one says you swim faster. This one increases jump height. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones. Some of them make you gather resources more efficiently. Things like that. So those are your talents. So you need talent books to unlock those. And then you have tech, which is your, you know, kind of general skills. A lot of your crafting things. All right, so we got a little bit of food. My health is slowly going back up after getting messed up by that NPC. And let's see if there was anything in his little building here that we can loot. All right, so there's a container. So the other thing scattered all over the map are these containers. So this one says it's a trash basket. Loot it. Now all that's in it is berries. But sometimes there's better stuff. So here's a large equipment crate. Let's see what's in that. All right, so we got some pre-made things here. We got some stone windows and concrete foundations. All pre-made, so that's kind of cool. And it looks like that's it for containers here.
All right, so that's it for that little building. And the NPCs will respawn after a while, and after a while those uh, containers will also restock as well. Not sure the exact time frame on that, but they do resupply after a while. So if you set up your base next to one of these little uh, NPC encampments, you can kind of farm them, you know, periodically, which is kind of neat. All right, so I'm just going to gather some more resources, try to make this wood uh, clothing. What do we need? I got to make some rope. Make the rope in your own inventory, just using fiber. And the nice thing is, uh, as you craft items, you'll see at the bottom of my screen, my XP bar is filling up. That's kind of cool too, so the more you craft, uh, the more XP you earn. You do, uh, I believe you do earn XP too from just uh, harvesting resources, so that's nice too. My hatchet's about to break. Alright, it finally broke. And we can repair it in our inventory. Go. Actually, that was one of the, the tasks I needed to do, was repair my equipment, so that gave me a few ether shards. It'll be nice once I get the improved tools, because you definitely harvest resources a lot faster. And then eventually you get gas-powered tools, like a chainsaw and um, a jackhammer. Which is very, very helpful. Alright, so we can make the top wear. What do I need? I need more rope. We're making ourselves some wood armor now. So, let's equip that. Then we need more rope. Make the pants, the shoes, the gloves. We're going to need more wood, so we'll just harvest some more of that. All right. So these different colored rocks like this give different types of metals. So I believe these ones that kind of have this uh, goldish tint to them, uh, these give copper ore. As we saw earlier, the reddish colored ones give iron. Kind of keep an eye out for those. The different colored rocks give different things. And sometimes just chopping generic rocks like these will give you a random little bit of other ore as well. And you get sand as well, as you can see. So see, I just got one lead ore randomly from just chopping a regular rock. So even the regular rocks do give a little bit of um, ore as well. Alright, so... Got more pieces of armor we can equip here. Go, and then we can look at our inventory tab here and see now we have the wood armor equipped. Doesn't give a lot of protection, but it helps a little. And we completed the task. So we get some ether shards. So see, we're up to 18 ether shards now. Just from doing the basic tasks here. Alright, so it still wants us to collect some animal hide and cook some meat. I'm going to kind of keep an eye out here for animals. 
So far, I haven't seen any, but there's usually different creatures lurking about. Sometimes there's wolves. Sometimes there's rabbits. Here's a player. I think we can kill him while he's asleep, but... Maybe we can. <laughs> can. <laughs> well, he just had some resources. I don't think we can get hide from him. Try, but... No hide from human players. All right, uh, let's see. Stick out just in case. But yeah, usually there's some kind of an animal lurking around. There's, um, sometimes there's eagles. Oh, see, look, there's a rabbit. Sorry, bunny. We need some hide. All right. Got the rabbit. This gives us meat, hide, and bone. Alright, so we only got eight hide. We need ten. It's... Oh, there's another rabbit. Sorry, bunny. Here we go. Alright. So we got our ten hide that was required by the quest. Completed that. So here's a random, you know, destroyed billboard looking thing. But as you can see, underneath it is a waste barrel. So you can search these. And we get 25 stone and 39 iron ore, which is nice because it takes a minute to, cra uh, to gather that much iron ore. Another rabbit. Get some more hide. Now, something else you can add to your items are these little attachments. Um, so this one says damage intensity, base damage 10%. Uh, can only be equipped to melee tools. So you can add these to, like, your spear, your knife, uh, things like that. Oh, it looks like I can make a stone sickle now. I'd make one of those, because those are good for harvesting fiber. So now, when I harvest these plants... I should get a little bit more fiber and possibly a higher chance at getting the plant mucus. Same building I was at before? I think it's a different one. Go in here and see what we can find. There's a box up here. Large equipment crate. Alright, so we got some pre-made concrete and stone walls and some ether shards. Like there's another box over here. Crash basket. Oh, so we got some trout, some berries, and some ether shards. Use the trout to make some cooked fish. Alright, so here's the map. As you can see, it shows that there's a lot of rabbits in this area. And there's my territory flag, and here's me. Helpful, you know, that it shows you where you are and things like that. And some kind of some landmarks on the map as well. As I'm running around, I definitely try to always be, you know, gathering fiber or whatnot. You know, if it's readily available like this, go ahead and farm it. Um, I mean, you're running by anyway, you might as well swing your sickle and... Get some resources, right? Plus it gets you XP. 
All this stone and stuff laying on the ground. These sticks. This mine. Yeah, this is my sleeping bag. <laughs> Alright, here's my little house. Go back in here for a minute. Actually, my forgot my campfire's out here. Put this in here. Let's put this in here. Let's activate it. And so unlike other survival games where if you just put the meat in the fire and light it, you do have to tell it to cook the meat. So up here it'll say roast meat. Here we go. And then it will cook it. There we go. We completed that task of cooking some meat. Now we can eat that. So at the bottom left, you can see there's a water uh, meter, and then there is a food meter as well. One setting I wanted to turn off. Streamer mode here, so let's turn that off. Wait, if anybody says anything crazy in the chat, it won't show. <laughs> we don't like profanity. All right. What's next on the task tracker? So it looks like we need to make a wood barrier, a wood gate. And then it also wants to make shock absorbers for our shoes. So to make shock absorbers, I need four tape. Let's see if we have enough to make four tape. Make 12. All right, so we got our four tape. And now we can make shock absorbers. It says reduces stamina lost while jumping by 10%. That one's okay. There's a better one that you can make later that reduces the amount of stamina used while running. That one's very useful. All right, so, and then it wants us to make some bandages. Have to unlock that possibly. Yep, supplies, bandages, grilled fish. Make that now. All right, so let's see. I think we make the bandages in the crafting table. Huh? Oh, right here. We need tape and rope to make bandages. Go. All right, so I need that. I'm gonna put my ether shards here in my base and my talent books. Some of this other stuff too, just in case I get killed out there in the wild. All right, so we did craft the shock absorbers. So what we do is we go to the inventory. We can click on our shoes, and as you can see here, there's two item slots. For this piece of armor so you just drag it in and there you go boom equipped so that completed a task got some xp and some more shards for that so we're up to 34 ether shards now it's all just the random stuff that we found in containers all right so it wants us to collect some crude oil and it wants me to craft the shovel, so I'll go ahead and craft the shovel. Go. And to collect the crude oil, you do need a shovel. Uh, you'll find it on the ground. It'll look like a little pile, like a little, kind of like a blackish colored pile on the ground. And you dig it with the shovel that you collect it. All right, and it also wants us to make a stone furnace. 
Probably need to unlock that. Wood barrier. Let's see. Stone furnace. There we go. And chemist bench. So the stone furnace we use to smelt the ingots. Those are used to make pretty much everything else in the game that's a more, little more advanced. You need the ingots. Certain items require different types of ingots, so either iron or copper or lead. And it gets more advanced than that, too. There's other types of metals. Alright, so we got some food all cooked here. And the cool thing about the, the grilled fish... So the grilled meat doesn't really do anything for you other than regenerate your food. But the grilled fish, see, it says it increases max stamina by 20 for 5 minutes. And it can stack for up to 30 minutes. So there you go. So when you eat that, as you can see now on the bottom left above my health, I have a little stamina buff for 5 minutes. Which is kind of cool. So there are more advanced types of foods that you can cook. Those give you different buffs. Looks like it's starting to snow. Because there's a rabbit nearby. Where is it? Kind of dark. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> oh, there's a rabbit. Bunch of rabbits. Holy, a lot of rabbits. Okay, so we need to make a furnace. Must make that in the crafting bench, I guess. And while we're out here, I know I'm going to need some of this iron. Go ahead and farm some of that. These ones that are kind of a bluish color, these give lead ore. Sorry, it's a little dark. It's kind of dark in the game right now. Alright, we've reached level 10. Alright. So, we need to make the furnace. We need stone and fiber for that. Go. Craft the furnace. What else do we need to do? We need to smelt iron ingots, and then it still wants us to make a wood barrier and a wood gate. Alright, so there's the furnace. go and then we can put our metal in here and add a little bit of wood activate it and now see we can do iron ingots or lead ingots because we have those in the furnace 30 of those some of these the other thing you can do with the furnace is this thing called advanced refinement so what you do is you load in any excess stone that you have, and it will convert the stone into random uh, ore. So sometimes you'll get a little bit of iron, lead, copper, whatnot. It's a little bit random. So that's another thing you can do with just excess stone that you have. You can throw it in the furnace and turn it into this advanced refinement. Alright, so those are cooking... And it still wants us to make a wood barrier and a wood gate. So let's see if we can do that. Or rope. 
Gotta harvest a little bit more fiber. Now, I'm noticing I'm hearing, you know, the wind. I had this happen before when I was playing where this wind sound just kind of persisted and never went away until I, I had to log out and log back in again. So if it doesn't go away in another minute or two, I may try to do that. Harvest some more iron. Alright, so we completed the iron ore task. Hurts to get a little bit more wood here. It's so much nicer once you get the more advanced tools. Sorry, bunny rabbit. Alright, so yeah, I'm going to try that real quick and see if we can do a quick log out. And see if that gets rid of this wind noise. Alright, so we're loading back in. I don't know if that's just like a glitch or what. Yeah. Still there. I yeah, see the, the wind sound seems to be gone now. Alright. So if that happens to you and you're playing in the just the wind noise, it just doesn't seem to go away. Uh yeah, that's appears to be the fix, so. Log out and log back in. Alright, we're cooking up some more meat. I am gonna have to figure out some water soon. You do get a little bit of water back from eating berries, but not a lot. Find some water soon. Thankfully, I am near the water. Um, but it looks like I'm also up on like a big cliff here. <laughs> so. Work my way down to the water. Alright, so. What did we make here? We made a wood barrier. That up. Oh, and now it wants us to make a wood gate. Or a rope. It did say when I logged in that there was about 30 other players in here, so... Wouldn't be surprised if we run into somebody, but... I am kind of in the beginner area here, so... Okay, so we can craft a gate... Then the next thing we can do is can start looking at the space-time beacon. But what that does is it actually creates a peace timer for your area. So it will create a circle perimeter, and then I believe it has to stand for 24 hours, though. 
So once you place the space-time beacon, you let it sit for 24 hours, and as long as you haven't been raided or anything since then, you can then set your peace timer for your area. And so the combat window in this game currently is three hours. So you basically can be attacked and raided at your base for three hours, um, but you get to decide what time that is. All right, so here's the big gate. Don't want to put it way up. At it. Wants to snap to that wall, but I don't. All right, so it did create a little bit of a barrier, so that's good. All right. So it wants us to craft a single pouch. Rope for that. What else do we need? Plenty of hide, so we're good there. And what these do is it adds inventory slots to your character. So as you can see, you have these locked inventory slots. So if I craft one of these pouches, I can then add it to my armor. So each piece of armor has two item slots. And so you can add these things. Now the pouch says it can be added to your top wear and your pants. So you can add one to each of those to get two extra inventory slots. Alright, so we have our pouch. We go to our top wear. Again, we have two inventory slots. We just drag that up there. Boom. That added one more inventory slot for us. And that completed another quest. Task, I should say. Alright. It wants us to make a wood hammer and repair a structure. Unlock all these things. We got the wood hammer now. And let's see. Make our space-time beacon. Uh, we do have enough stuff, so let's go ahead and make that. So these are additional things you can add to your items. So this one does effective skinning. Gets you more meat collection. And then you can have a quiver that increases ammunition change speed by 20%. All right, so I did make the beacon. So let's place that. Thing here. Oh, because it's overlapping my flag territory. Hold on. So let's demolish this. this put on the back side of this wall here that I just made there we go now we have the beacon but once this sits here for 24 hours uh, we can then set a peace timer the defense settings so see you can set your time but it does take 24 hours to take effect so. the 
get it from six to nine currently. And then the other thing that this does is you can tell it to send supplies. And what will happen is enemies will storm it and try to break it, and you have to defend it. And as long as you're able to defeat all of the enemies, you get random supplies. And it gets harder and harder and harder each wave. So you can set up additional defenses to help with that. Uh, you can put up like turrets, uh, traps, things like that to help defend your beacon. All right, so wants me to repair a structure, but nothing's damaged yet. And in 10 minutes, or about 8 minutes, 40 seconds, as you can see that clock ticking down in the top left, that's when we can initiate a raid, like I was talking about, to get those resources. All right, so as you can see, we're next to a big farm here. So I'm going to see what we can find here. Hopefully I won't get killed. Probably are numerous bad guys here. One right here. Right, so they had shards and talent books. Uh oh. I just heard something. Where is it? Oh, where is it? Where are you? Oh, it's a guy on the ground. It's a jumper. These guys are nasty. Yeah, he's really strong. Oh! Probably gonna kill me. Uh, run away! <laughs> Probably chased me all the way back to my house. You watch. Oh, he's still chasing me. Need to set up some traps. All right, let's see if I can heal myself. Bandage. make some more bandages. Alright, so let's make one of these things. Damage intensity. Maybe I can get... Uh, a little more damage on my spear. Follow me right back to my house. There he goes. <laughs> Alright, so see, we have damage intensity. Here we go. Now my spear does... A little bit extra damage. 10% at least. Now that jumper, I probably am going to need like a gun or something to fight him. Got a lot of health. There he is right there. He's got 1,850 health. We'll see if we can avoid him for a minute. Maybe, uh... Let's fight some of these lower level guys. Person here. Oof, there's a bunch of people. This is one of the larger type compounds that you'll come across. 
where there's a bunch of people. Here without being detected. Oh no. The jumper's after me. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to come back here when I'm a little stronger. Facing me? Yep, he is. Yeah, eventually I'll put up like some turrets and things like that, and I'll be able to deal with some of these stronger enemies. So the thing you see up in the in the sky over there, that spaceship looking thing, those are supply drops. And those will move around the map and they are based on level. So they'll be different colored and you know, it, you can only open them based on your level. So if you're not high enough level for the one that it is, you won't be able to open it. Assuming this is the little house that we looted earlier. I'm assuming it hasn't restocked yet. No. Every so often those will resupply. So in three minutes, it's going to let me do the supply beacon. So we'll do that. And I'll show you how that works. Not sure. It wants me to harvest 10 crude oil, but I don't know if there's any crude oil in this area. Kind of go look around here while we wait for that timer to count down. Now these plants, see it says dandelions? These are good because they usually give you more of the plant mucus as well. There we go. So see, that one gave me five plant mucus. Whereas some of these other bushes, you're lucky to get one. Doesn't even always give it to you. Another dandelion. definitely keep an eye out for those okay perfect right here so see this pile here this is how you harvest the crude oil where's my shovel let's equip that so you just have to have a shovel and you just dig it up now unfortunately I only got six crude oil out of that pile with this basic stone shovel um, once you get a better shovel, you'll get more. For now, I only got six, so... I'll probably have to come back here later when that pile respawns. To get the other four to get the ten. Alright, so somebody has a little base here. And we're in luck. There's another pile right here. So these piles on the ground is what you want to look for. So there we go. Got our 10 crude oil to complete the task. So it looks like another person has started building a little base here. Keep an eye out for them. Go ahead and break their sleeping bag. <laughs> I don't want them near my house. All right, what's happening? I am out of water, so that's not good. Is this a path that leads down to the water, actually? We're going to need water. Said you can eat the berries to get some water back, but it doesn't give you a lot. This path might lead down to the water. Maybe. Still kind of high up here. That's a cool little 
area down there. Okay, so it looks like we might be able to make it down to the water. So one of the quests it wants me to do right now is to make a fish basket. So we'll do that while we're down here. Dandelion. The cool little spot with the little houses and stuff. All right. Made it down to the water, and we can drink the seawater. Even though it's seawater, you can drink it. There we go. While we're down here, let's see. Structures. Fish basket. What do we need to make a fish basket? More rope. So the way these work is you place them in the water, and over time, they will collect fish. Uh, they also get a little bit of sand, and then they get these little crayfish-looking things. I think you can use uh, in some of the more advanced recipes. Alright, so... There we go, we have our fish basket... Put that out here in the water, that, and then again over time, you know, you can come out here and access it. I'm going to put a sleeping bag out here so that I remember where I put this. <laughs> Plus in case I get killed down here. Just gonna name the bed fish. There we go. So yeah, see now it has an inventory and over time it will fill up with fish. I'm gonna check out these little houses while I'm right here, and then I'm gonna run back to the base. Oh, if there's anything in here. I've actually never seen one of these little village looking things right on the beach. Could just be for looks. Oh, we do have a container. Oh, we got some mushroom soup, some eggs, and some ether shards. What's the mushroom soup do? It says it restores 20 fullness over 25 seconds and hydration. It increases bite and physical resistance by 5% for 5 minutes. Cool. So there are containers here. I'll have to keep that in mind. Back here. Oh, here's a box. Got some stone stairs and stone walls, all pre-made. Nice. Always convenient finding things all pre-made like that. All right. Got some water, so we're good there. Go back up the hill towards our base, so... Looks like somebody has a bunch of fish baskets here. Mine over there. Whose are these? Belong to Conan. <laughs> and see, so things that are not within your beacon range will decay over time. The structures. So this person's uh, thing is decaying over time. I break these. Maybe I need stronger tools. Alright, so I'm going to drink water one more time while I'm down here. There we go. 
Now my water's full. And we'll head back up the path to the base. But at least now we know we do have a direct path down to the water. I may even just build a base down here uh, closer to the water eventually. Definitely convenient having a water source. I think eventually um, you can build things that collect water, like a dew collector, I think it's called. So those are cool once you're able to unlock that and you don't have to worry about being next to the water. Here's a guy on the ground. You fell asleep in a bad place, my friend. Got some basic tools and resources. Thank you for the thank you for your donation. <laughs> All right. Got to make our way back to the base. It's getting dark. surprised usually there's like wolves or eagles or something around that try to get you but then again i am kind of in one of the beginner starter zones here so probably make it a little less uh intense all right so let's head back to the base it's right there, and I'll show you how this space-time beacon works. Alright, so... What you do is you go up to your beacon and you say to receive supplies so press e receive supplies and what it's going to do is it's going to send a wave of enemies at this beacon and i have to try to defeat them all if i do i get some stuff so as you can see round one should give me some ether shards a blueprint pack and a supply pack here we go oh i have to make oh okay i forgot i have to make a creature lure first so, probably something I have to unlock. Thing? Oh no, I have it in there. Maybe I have to make it in the crafting table. House. Oh, All right. All right, right here. Creature lure. So we need some ether shards and iron ingots, which I have made in here. All right, there we go. Now we can reach your lure. Go, then we just place that outside. Right here, it looks like. No. All right, now the creature should try to come. Here we go. Kill intruders and protect the beacon, it says. All right, so here they come. Oh. They do drop stuff, which is cool. And it's always, you know, really easy at first, but they definitely get uh, more difficult as the waves get higher. Oh, here's one I missed. There we go. It says victory. 
Now we go up to this, we say receive supplies, and as you can see, it gave us some blueprints, some shards, a bunch of random stuff. So in 10 minutes, we can do that again, and it will be round two, and so it'll be you know, more difficult the next time. A couple of... Uh... I can use this to seal in my house here. So yeah, we got a few blueprints. Uh, we got some parts, a few arrows, some machine parts, some things like that. There we go. Now my base has a roof on it at least. All right. So another thing you have to do is you do have to keep uh, adding resources to your beacon. So see, this says it wants fiber. And by putting those resources in, that's what keeps your structure auto-repairing. So it doesn't decay. You wanted 32 fiber, and now my auto-repair duration is 187 hours. So it should keep my structures up and running. So can I unlock the higher, like the better tools yet? Okay, I, oh, so I need to make the weapon bench. Then at what level is this? At level 13, I can get iron tools. That will definitely make things so much easier. I can get iron tools. A lot of wood to make these wood barriers. I'd like to encase my base those barriers. Try to keep people out of it for the first 24 hours at least. we go level 13 so we can now make the iron tools so definitely want to get that going so let's see what do I need make the weapon bench check that out I'm probably gonna need more iron ingots so let me just go ahead and farm some of that real quick get those cooking So, weapon bench. We need stone, wood, and rope. Stone, wood, rope, weapon bench. And then we can get better tools, and those increase the rate of harvest for everything. So that makes it so much better. Pickaxe. 
else can I unlock? Anything? Vehicles yet. Get thermal lining. That's nice. It keeps you warm. Grinding table. Ah, the rain collector. There we go. Make one of those now, too. Okay, so to make better tools, we need iron ingots and rope. Make a bunch of rope. The iron ingots. More than that. Oh. Iron axe. Definitely make things better. All right, so yeah, we're finally getting some more advanced stuff. And yeah, basically things will start to get a little easier now once you get more advanced tools and weapons and things like that. So we'll end things right there, everybody. This is a good little starter for anyone who's new to the front. It kind of gives you a basic understanding of how to get started, at least. Um, things do get more advanced from here. You can start crafting more advanced weapons, armor, vehicles, uh, you know, better structures for your base. You can start making them out of stronger materials, things like that. You can put up defenses, all kinds of cool stuff. So we'll show some of that in the next video. Uh, but for now, we'll end it here. Thanks so much for watching. I do hope you subscribe or follow the channel before you leave today. And make sure you leave a comment in the comment section about what you think about the front. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.